come on around. There we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I want to introduce who's with me up on the dais here. With us today is uh, Special Agent Charge of the FBI, Gordon Johnson, Assistant Special Agent ATF, Matt Varesco, uh, New York State Major, New York State Delaware Police Major, uh, Melissa Zebley, Newcastle County Police Major Wendy Fieser, uh, Wilmington Police Department Inspector Clayton Smith, and Wilmington Police Department Inspector uh, Cecilia Ash. And, and I'm Chief Robert uh, Tracy of the Wilmington Police Department. Um, so today we're having a press conference uh, because we have a hunt for a, a man named uh, Radhi Prince, 37 years of age, male black, uh, who earlier today uh, shot five people in Maryland. Uh, Looked like he shot five co-workers, a place that he's working now, or he, uh, he worked in the past. We're trying to establish that information. And then he came here and shot somebody in Wilmington. And uh, what I'm going to do is to go through the events of what happened, the timeline, uh, go through what we're doing to try to find this individual, and what we're doing with all our federal and state and local law enforcement authorities uh, to try to track this individual down. Can you speak up a little bit to you, please? Absolutely. Thanks, which one is yours? <laughs> so I'll, I'll speak directly in that one. So this morning in Maryland at uh, 8.58 hours at Advanced Granite Solutions located in Emerton Business Park in Englewood, Maryland, uh, police responded to, to an incident where five individuals were shot right now, three are deceased. Uh, I believe there's a news conference that was done by the Hartford County Sheriff in Maryland that was done several hours ago that was that went into some of the specifics. Uh, Maryland State Police actually put out uh, an alert to surrounding jurisdictions and other states of who this individual is and what type of car they're driving. We've actually put the picture out to the news media and to the public earlier today as far as the description of a GMC Acadia with a license plate to look for as well. And if you don't have it, we'll make sure that you have it right after this press conference. Uh, and then at 1046 hours, uh, we received a call of shots fired at a car dealership at 2000 uh, 2800 block of Northeast Boulevard. Uh, it was called in by a business secretary that we get an individual that was shot twice. Upon response to our officers, we came upon an individual who was conscious and alert, but it was actually shot two times. And uh, our officers uh, were speaking with him, and our officers were advised by the victim. He gave us the name, who was the same victim and same suspect from Maryland, same description of a vehicle that just shot him and that he was known to him. Uh, our officers actually saw the vehicle leaving the scene, were able to give a short chase, but lost the vehicle going northbound on 30th and, and Market Street. So the last time that we've seen this individual today was earlier this morning. Uh, we confirmed one victim with a gunshot to the head in 2800. But what I want to make clear before I get into what we're doing, uh, you know, there's been schools that have some lockdown They've had schools, and you know we want to make sure that we put everything in place to make sure we keep the community safe. But this individual, for what we know right now, every one of the victims that this individual shot, the victims and the offender knew each other. So these were targeted shootings for, for whatever reason that this person, uh, his motive is to go out and shoot these individuals, including the person where he drove up to 28th at Northeast Boulevard and shot that victim. They have a past history together. And after that, we have had not seen them or heard them. Where this individual, we haven't seen the car and we haven't seen the individual. We do have a tip line that we want everyone to use. But before you use a tip line, this person is still dangerous. He's armed. He's desperate. And the first thing everybody should do if they do see this individual in this car is call 911 and give the specifics of the information that we're getting out to the public and you and the news media are giving out. So the tip line for the local tip line is 302-576-3635. And because this is multi-state jurisdictional authority, we also have an FBI hotline and tip line, 1-800-CALL-FBI. We're working with New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, our FBI, our ATF, the U.S. Marshals, Newcastle County, Wilmington Police Department. We're working together jointly. We set up an operations center here. Uh, upstairs and through our real-time crime center and we're in touch with the fusion centers in our state and other states to make sure we're sharing information and any, any information that we have that we're going out and we're acting on it 
We know of last known addresses that this individual has lived at. Some have been in Wilmington, some have been in Newcastle County, some have been in Maryland. So we have to have a coordinated effort and that's exactly what we're doing. We're doing it at this time. So I want to assure the community, this is targeted. This individual knew the people he wanted to go shoot. This wasn't a random act of violence where the person went out indiscriminately and was shooting people up. So I want to get that clear. And as far as the schools, as far as going on lockdown, you know, this person is dangerous. You never know what's going to go through a person's mind. But right now, the individual is being tracked down as we speak. And we're looking, we're turning over every stone to try to find this individual through technology and through good, good police work. And hopefully we'll have this person in custody soon so it doesn't cause any more harm. As far as the schools, I would consider they can make that call on their own. We will update. We'll continue to update tonight if we have this person apprehended. But we also know that he's mobile and he's been in different states. And uh, the last we seen was going northbound up in the, uh, the north side of Wilmington, heading northbound on North Market Street. So what I'm going to do now is open up some questions. And uh, you know we, we're looking forward to your cooperation, getting this information, who this individual is, and sharing this with the public. So thank you. Chief, can you, you tell us your understanding of why he originally shot the people he knew and at his own workplace? What prompted that shooting? Well, you know, the Hartford County Sheriff gave, uh, he actually gave a press conference. And I, I don't know what the reason is that he shot them, but he did work with these individuals. He shot five of them. Two of them are deceased at this time. And, you know, as I started this press conference, we, we all got to remember, you know, there's victims and victims' families that our hearts and, and, and our prayers should be going out to them. We just had a tragedy that I talked about yesterday. It happened on Monday. But these, th there's people suffering right now. So we and the press and the police department, our hearts and prayers go out to these individuals and these families of these victims. And, you know, I don't know what goes through people's minds. There could be something that's going on at that workplace that happened, and we've seen workplace violence that's happened in the past. I don't know what could have precipitated that. The investigation will come through with that. But I do know the individual that he shot at 28th and Northeast Boulevard, they have a past history together. And they've had beefs, and they've had history together. Uh, so there's probably some things going on that he was, he was going up there, and that was premeditated, why he drove straight from Maryland to that individual. But I don't think those two are connected. The only connection is that they, he knew the individuals in Maryland, and he knew the individual he shot at 28th and Northeast Boulevard. And by his omission, immediately, he was conscious alert after being shot. And he gave us the name immediately. He said, he gave us the name, which matched the name that we got an alert from the Maryland State Police that we put over our radio only an hour before that. Chief, can I ask you, do you believe he is still in Delaware? Best guess, this guy can be anywhere. I mean, look at the states. We have New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland in such close proximity of Wilmington. And how quick did he get from Edgewood, Maryland? It took about an hour drive to get here. So he can be anywhere. But, you know, we have technology we're searching to see if that plate caught, crossed any place with, you know, easy pass or lights, red light technology. Uh, we have some things, but we haven't located this vehicle. Uh, could he be here? Could he be with uh, some associates? Could he be with uh, a family member? Those are all leads that we're looking at, and, and believe me, we're kind of all over those type of leads, but we actually don't know where he is, and we're taking every precaution to make sure that uh, we're looking at every avenue, old girlfriends, addresses, girlfriends now, family members, associates from past arrests. Uh, we have to take a look at everything, and, and that's what we're doing at this point, and then even making sure that we, we look at anybody that might come forward and give us information where his whereabouts might be at this time, and then take take the proper action we have to do in law enforcement to bring uh, bring him into custody. What was the, the relationship Delaware victims between victims case, the Delaware victims case disposition? The Delaware? No, he's not. He's 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 in the hospital. He's alert. He's conscious. He was able to give us that information. So no, he he's right now he's not likely to die, and he was able to give us some pretty good information that immediately allowed us to to make sure that we were able to link what just happened in Maryland, how we, where we got, the, we got the alert from Maryland police who sent it over to Delaware State Police who put it out and broadcasted it throughout the state of Delaware. So we were able to put two and two together immediately because of the information supplied by that victim on 28th and Northeast Boulevard. And he was shot in the head according to the witnesses, yeah? Yeah, he, according, uh, to witnesses, according to witnesses, you know, there, there's one in the, in, in the head vicinity and I believe one in the body. What was your relationship? Is it a business relationship? With the individual? Between, between the suspect and, and the, the victim. Are we talking Maryland or are we talking Wilmington. in Wilmington? 
Uh, right now, they've had some past history on, on some criminal cases. That's, that's where I'd rather leave it at this time. But there are some, there are some, it, there's an historical basis that goes back a couple of years where they're known to each other. So and whatever reason. Where one did something to the other? Uh, no, I don't believe there's any assaults right now between individuals or wrongdoing. Uh, I think there's just a relationship uh, that has gone awry for some reason. We'll leave it at that. As far as the vehicle is concerned, uh, was this vehicle always registered to him, or did he get it off of this lot where this car dealership was? And secondly, do you still feel that he is associated with this car, and you think he may have gotten rid of it at this point since he saw the notice being looked for? You know, I, I think it was co-registered, the vehicle. Please, I'll, I'll get that information and confirm it, but from what I know, it was co-registered. And right now, uh, he has to know uh, that everybody's looking for him. He has to see the news media, his family members uh, have been contacted. You know, so there's, there's definitely, uh, he knows the amount of resources are going to find him to make sure he doesn't cause any more harm. Uh, and we have not seen the vehicle, so I have to think that he, it's, it's probably put that vehicle somewhere. We'll come across it if it's not in a garage. And uh, I don't think he's used, I, I don't right now, if he is using it, then we're going to catch up to it. But right now, I believe he probably has ditched his vehicle if he knows the type of, uh, type of resources we're putting in to try to find him. Chief, if you look into his criminal background record here in Delaware, and what does that tell you, if anything? Well, when we look at, he's got, right now in Delaware, uh, he's got 42 arrests. You know, a lot of them are violation of probation. But right now, he's got 15 felony convictions and four misdemeanor convictions and yes we always look into their past history of arrest because that's where we can delve some intelligence information of where he's been arrested before who his associates are who he's with who he hangs with where he's lived and we got to make sure his past relationships all these things are in play we absolutely do look at look into those things Chief, you said those people I think I, I think I got a question yes, over here I just want to clarify did you say your officers saw the vehicle leaving um, after the shooting and, and if they did, did they give chase? Did they go after it? My, my officers were tending to more of the victim. And, and a, a, as we got information that this might be the person, I think it, it was absolutely, it was in sight, but we were not able to pursue it to make sure that we could bring it, bring, uh, bring him and apprehend this vehicle or bring this person to justice. So the last we saw the vehicle was at 30th and Market. So there probably was a, a short following no pursuit, but we lost the vehicle going northbound. That's the last place that officers could say that they saw it. 30th and Market. 30th and Market, going northbound. Do you believe he used the same gun in Maryland and here in Remington? Right now, uh, we believe the shell casings that we have right now uh, are possibly the same gun. We have to do a ballistic analysis on it, and, and uh, we're going to do that as quickly as possible to tie them in. But uh, we believe it's probably the same gun that was used in both cases. Could anyone else be targeted now? You said these were targeted people. Are there anyone else who you might think is targeted? And do you know what his um, current address is, where he lives, at least the city? Well, I'm going to answer two parts of that question. Uh, can anybody else be targeted? Uh, how many more people does he have beefs with? I don't know what goes through his mind and why he was doing it. What he did the first time to shoot five people, the rationale to go out and shoot five people, like he did kill three of them, and then come all the way here to shoot this individual, that was shot on 28th and Northeast Boulevard. Could there be other people out there? Absolutely. But that, when he was doing this, was at a time that he wasn't very well known and on our radar. So uh, we do look, I, I look at the arrest records, and uh, as the other reporter asked, do we look at that? Yes, we look at intelligence information, not only who he's been arrested with, or is anybody in the case that might know something that actually can cause harm by testifying. We look at all these things. So, and we make sure that we get that information out and we cover all our bases. So I think the probability of the getting any getting to anyone else that he might want to get to, he's going to expose himself where we probably can make our arrest. Are there uh, other friends or and family or associates of his that you have uh, recommended to uh, stay inside or, or do anything to protect themselves in, in the possibility of that? We have spoken with the families. It's been all over the news media. We've asked for cooperation, uh, and right now. I believe whatever that he had going on in Maryland and what he had with this individual on 28th and Northeast Boulevard uh, was very targeted. We kind of can, one's workplace violence. I don't know the reasons behind it, but I do know some of the reasons that behind 28th and, and Northeast Boulevard, what possibly could have been his motive to go up there. I don't see any connecting anything else. Uh, I, I can't talk about the, the workplace violence. I can't, I can 
really surmise some motives on 28th and Northeast, and we haven't seen any other things that would, would raise our suspicions of something else like that would happen. What does that tell you? What you know about the 28th Street? What can you tell us about that? What, that what right now that they're known to each other, and they've had some past history, uh, like I answered earlier, and that's really where I want to go with that right now as this investigation continues. Chief, can you describe the operation around uh, the 11th this morning at 500 block of CMNC Road? We're going to circumvent around, you know, as I said, we're, we're looking at all addresses. We're all looking at past addresses. We're looking at past arrest locations, associates, anybody that might have been associated with this individual that might be able to where he might be hiding, where he might be going. So you're going to, you're going to see operations that are set up in different parts, some locations in the city, some locations in the county. And actually out in Maryland, we've had some operations where we had to make sure that we looked at these locations to make sure that this individual wasn't hiding out those individuals or causing any more harm. So you're definitely going to see some of, some of police activity in certain areas of the city because we're following up possibly where we want to go in the beginning and then when we get leads. So I really don't want to get into certain addresses. It wouldn't be fair. But if you do see some of those operations, it might be a tip, a lead, where the person is, or some past addresses where this individual lived or family members. What's your message? Our message, this is a dangerous individual. This person shot six people in one day. Three are dead right now. Three are dead. This is a person with no conscience. This is not a person you should be protecting. This person doesn't deserve any protection of what he's done to five innocent people and the individual and the other innocent person that he's done up on uh, 28th and Northeast Boulevard. So my message to them is make a phone call. Let us know where he's at because he's going to go out and do more harm because he's desperate right now. And as my f officers search for them, uh, I don't want any of my officers coming across this individual as well uh, and not knowing who this individual is so they can cause harm to my officers or the public. So call us, let us know where he is, give us information, help us out, because right now this person's taken three lives and, and he's, he's damaged three others and he doesn't deserve to be protected. That's my message to the, anybody that's harboring this individual. Can you tell us more about the scope of the manhunt you have going now, the number of people involved? Well, right now you, you're seeing leadership from the FBI. Uh, Gordon Johnson oversees the Baltimore office, which actually encompasses Wilmington. We have the ATF. The U.S. Marshals, although they don't have a representative up here, the fugitives, they're out there right now doing the hunt with our offices. Uh, we have the state police. Maryland State Police is doing, the, doing what they can do geographically, their responsibility. We have the Delaware State Police. We have the Newcastle County. We have the Wilmington Police Department. And, you know, we're putting as much resources as possible that everything that we can to make sure we bring this person in and, and, and uh, bring him into custody before he causes harm. Because it's that important. Because look at what he's been capable of doing already. It's targeted right now. But, but a dangerous person, uh, a person that's desperate is also dangerous. But it's targeted now. It's not random. But we're putting every resource that we can from every uh, federal, local, and state agency. New Jersey knows what's going on. Pennsylvania knows what's going on. Maryland is actually dealing with what they have with intelligence information. And because we're dealing with all these uh, jurisdictions interstate, we actually have a command center, communication center that's set up here that's in touch with fusion centers from both all uh, from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland. The FBI is helping coordinate from their, from their fusion center. So we have a coordinated response. So we're not stepping on each other. So we can be as efficient as possible to find this individual. Chief, if the suspect is watching, what do you want him to hear? Turn yourself in. Because if you're with somebody, maybe these are targeted individuals that you went and you had a beef with. But turn, turn yourself in because somebody that maybe you don't have a beef with is going to get hurt. And we don't want any more violence. And maybe he's thought about it and been a little bit remorseful. I don't think so from what he's done. But the bottom line is he should turn himself in and, and deal with that. Uh, because we're going to catch you. And we're, we're, we're coming after you. And we're going to make sure that we, we bring you to justice. Sir, was this really touching on surveillance video at all? Are you working with footage? Pardon me if you've already answered that. Well, one of the things is that we know who the individual is. So that's going to be more of making the case when he comes under arrest, when, he, when it goes to uh, prosecution. Those are the things that we're going to 
and I'd have to bring up for prosecution purposes and, and, and trial, should it ever go to trial. These things, we know who the individual is. So right now, we're, our effort is concentrated on, let's capture this guy. Let's go out and get him, and we'll deal with all these things, because he's a known perpetrator right now. So we'll get all, all that evidence is being collected, so we don't dismiss that. We have people doing that. But the most important thing right now is for us to catch this individual, and that's what we're trying to do at this time. So the primary evidence that We were, able to, we were able to gain information who this individual was, uh, positive information who this individual was. I don't want to get into what happened in Maryland. They were able to get positive information to give us the information of the car and who the individuals that did the shooting. We were able to confirm from the victim here immediately, he cooperated, hey, this is who this person is and the vehicle he was in after he was shot. So we were able to tie those two things together. So we have two, sh two shootings with specific purposes that only he can talk about. We could probably know a little bit of a motive up here. I'm not sure what happened that can cause that workplace violence down in Maryland. Do you have uh, any information about why the vehicle, why he, the suspect and the vehicle would have still been on the scene there? When your officers got there, they were able to see him leaving. Why was he still there? Well, our officers got there. Uh, the response time was pretty quick. So by the time that individual would shoot somebody, get back to his car, and then try to leave the location, our officers pulled up to the location. Immediately, the victim let us know who, who had shot him. We were able to tend to the victim and also try to go out and see if we can catch up with that vehicle. So, you know, when you come to a scene, we have no idea what it's about. But first thing is sanctity of life. We've got to make sure that we provide aid to a victim. And we didn't know exactly what happened or what vehicle was involved until, that, until the victim told us. So there's a little bit of a delay on our part uh, because we had no idea if we were had the shooting had to do anything with the shooting that happened in Merrillton. And it wasn't confirmed until the victim let us know. So there's a little bit of space between that. Our officers, uh, other officers pulling up to the scene, we were able to glean that information. Possibly officers said they saw the vehicle, they tried to give chase, it was too far ahead, and we lost it. Not that I know of at this time. Uh, you know, we're still interviewing our victim to glean more information uh, from what that was about. What that was about. Uh, but that's going to be part of the investigation. Uh, they, they, they know each other, and, and there's a, he knew exactly who the person was. And you know, he'll, he'll, he'll let us know what's going on and why the person shot him. And we pretty much got a good, good idea why that happened. Is this the same guy he got into an altercation with in January? I'll. I'll as this continues, we'll give more detailed information. I just want to catch this guy. I want to make sure that we get him off the street. And we'll, come, we'll be forthcoming with a lot more information. As the detectives talk to victims, the investigation behind this continues. And then we already know who the individual is. And he's the one that we want to bring to justice and, and apprehend as soon as possible. I'll take, I'll take one more question. You mentioned that he had quite the rap sheet. Right. And in this case, it was somebody he had dealt with past. Have you gone with other people who've been involved with different crimes here in the, in the city, in the county, in the state, and to maybe he's gone there, maybe he's going there next. Have you right. covered the lead? Right, and, and, and the, the, one of the first questions that I had is making sure all intelligence information, following up on all arrests, locations, victims, uh, and also associates in all these arrests. Could he be hiding out with someone? Could he has still have another, could he have a beef with someone from being associated with prior arrests? So all those things we look at, we make sure that we're, we're following up on, and uh, they're not lost to us. And that's part of the overall investigation and part of this whole manhunt that we're, that we're doing right now. We gotta follow up on every lead, because anything's possible, but we know everything that's been happening right now, he, the offender knew his victims, and the victim knew the offender in Maryland, and up here on 28th and Northeast Boulevard, the offender and the victim both knew each other. So that's, that's pretty important that this is not a person that's going and randomly shooting people up at this time. Not to say he's not dangerous, but I'm saying, but that's not his motive at this time. And uh, hopefully we can bring him to justice very soon. Were all those crimes in Delaware or were they throughout the area? Well, he, he had an address in Maryland and uh, all the crimes that I'm talking about is off Delaware right now. So I, I haven't done a whole, uh, rap sheet on them in regional area from other states. I'm just going more specific. For the timeliness of, 
of this press conference. I tried to get as much information as possible to get it out to you. And, and here's the thing. We need your help. We need your help getting this information out, uh, cooperation of the press and the public. And once again, uh, hearts and prayers go out to the, the victims, the victims' families uh, of, of this incident. And uh, we're seeing a couple of tragic incidents that, that have happened in the last couple of days. So please keep that in mind. And, and thank you for your patience as we try to do our operational piece and our investigation piece and your patience. We will try to get as much information in a, in a timely manner out to you because we do need your help and I appreciate your patience. So thank you very much.